Welcome to Wine and Watercolors with Wendy. Uh, today we are going to do a diving helmet. I've been doing so many sea creatures, I felt a diving helmet was the way to go. We are paired today again with the Ava Grace Chardonnay because it's what I have. Um, you don't have to drink the Ava Grace, that's just what I'm having. I'm going to move it out of the way because I'm getting a shadow on my workspace. And I'm going to move my wine out of the way and my daughter's cup out of the way because she's sitting in here to keep the uh, shadows off the workspace. Okay, so today we're going to kind of go crazy with this. Obviously, I'm always going crazy. So I know if you're annoyed with that, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so um, we're going to do like a dark helmet and then do some of the accents and a couple of brighter colors and then add some rust. So we're using Dandelion Paint Company, Lemon Yellow, Violet, and Space Blue. We're gonna use a little bit of black for some accents. If you don't have black, don't worry about it. Um, and then we're gonna use some Bleed Proof White to do these reflections. And then I have uh, my Terrain, uh, my Prima Watercolor, my Prima Confection Watercolor Pan in Terrain. And we're going to use the color uh, maple. We're gonna use this color because it's kind of a rusty color and I think that'll do a nice little, some rusty aspects to it. And I may decide to put on some like moss or barnacles, like it's been in the ocean for a very long time. But we won't use this for a while so I'm gonna set it off to the side. Um, okay, we have Canson, 150 pound, um, 140 pound. I don't know why I always say it wrong. Cold press watercolor paper. <laughs> I got two brushes, a big one and a little one. I've got the outline. I've already transferred it. I use a light box. Uh, you can use graphite transfer paper. You can use a window. Just make sure your lines are light, especially right here where we're doing the highlights and the wind on the glass because you want that to be able to shine. I've never painted this before, like I like to tell you guys all the time when I have no idea what I'm doing. So we're just going to have at it. We're going to start and I'm going to start with the space blue and the violet and we're just going to kind of see what happens here. So what I think is I'm going to make most of the stuff in the space blue and then I'm going to add some uh, dark spots in the violet. Sorry, I'm trying to move that cord without moving the phone. Hoping that works. <laughs> Everything is always just weird here. It's, it's just uh, how things work. Wine, paint, water, don't mix them up. Using the big brush, gonna dive right in. Ha, <laughs> see what I did there? Um, and we're gonna just start and let me put some of the violet on the pan too. Now the violet and the blue are gonna look almost exactly the same. So you're gonna really just need to remember which one you put where. And we're just gonna start by I think I'm gonna start um, in this section here. So I've dipped my paintbrush in some water. I've got my wet, I've got my paper towel um, and that I haven't changed out. It's really, really messy. That's okay. I'm grabbing some of the purple and it's really, really dark. So I'm gonna just start with the purple right here. And I don't know why I started at the bottom of it, not the top. It's just kind of what I'm feeling right now that I want to see how this works before I commit to doing it all over. Okay, so we've done that bottom line and now we're just gonna start blending. Blending it up and around. Feel free to use a lot of water. I'm avoiding some of these little um, air hole things. It's an old school diving helmet. I will be honest, if I say anything is anything, I'm probably making it up. I have no idea what things are called on this at all. So 
we're just going to pretend that each of these doohickeys is a certain kind of doohickey and it's no worries. Try to maintain your circle. If you lose it, it's okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're all good about that. All right, getting a little bit of more water. Kind of blend this up some. Kind of like how dark blue it, or purple it is down here. And I'm gonna grab some of this blue. And I'm gonna go right here. And then I'm gonna kind of uh, blend the two together so it's almost gonna give us like an ombre effect in between there. So I'm just grabbing the blue and I'm going straight into the purple. Get a little bit more blue and keep doing this around. You'll want to work a little quickly because your purple's going to dry, but if it dries and it won't blend, all you got to do is add some more. It's not that big of a deal. So we're going to take this down. And we don't want it to be perfect either. We just kind of want it to roll around there. Okay, now I'm turning my page. I am a page turner. I got some more blue. I'm just gonna keep going around the center section here. And get more water to blend it into the violet. So this violet's dried a little. You can see it's not blending as easily, but it'll still blend. And I kind of like these little blooms that I'm getting here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just deal with it. <laughs> that's 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 my motto of painting. Just deal with it. So we're gonna take this up into here. So we're gonna keep that bottom purple, but we're gonna make the top blue. And I'm gonna recommend that you avoid these because we're gonna to try to make them like a really bright yellow and have them really, really pop. I probably should do this upside down. <laughs> And to give it form, I like to make the edges a little darker and then pull it in to give it kind of a 3D effect. So there'll be a shadow back here, or it might glow a little because of these lights that we're putting in. And the singing in the background, that would be my husband. Not sure what he's singing to. <laughs> He does that sometimes, we just let it go. So we're gonna blend this down. And sometimes if you want things to look round, you actually make your strokes round. So they're curved to give you that rounder shape. And this is just the first layer. We can always add more. It's no, uh, no stress, no worries. We're just gonna do kind of a light around here. See, we're getting a line right there. It's okay. A little bit more water. And we wanna blend these two sections into each other. If you are having trouble and you're struggling, just do a little bit at a time and that will probably make you feel a little better. And you'll have less of this blending issue that I'm having. Okay, so I'm having a real bad blending issue right there. So I'm gonna get some of the space blue and I'm gonna just take it up here. And since this is all nice and wet, it's gonna start doing some of the bleeding out and blending for me. So 
I just wanted to have that be a little bit more and then kind of pull it across a little bit. And if yours isn't working this way, it happens because it's water and water doesn't always do what we want it to do. turn that around just kind of blending around so I still think this line up here is a little too harsh so I'm gonna get a little bit more and I'm gonna work in sections this time like I should have the first time some water and pull that down I'll still keep it nice and dark up there but it'll pull it down and give us this nice, weird, purpley blue effect, which is totally what I'm going for. I can't even tell you why it's what I wanted to do. It's just what I wanted to do. Um, the best thing about watercolors is you can do whatever you want. Um, if you want this to be green and orange, or if you want this to be a actual like sunset scene that might be kind of cool if you want to do like a sunset scene in the glass that would be kind of fun it would make it look like it's sitting on a beach somewhere and it's capturing the sunset as it's like buried or something if you wanted to do something like that that'd be kind of awesome and i'd be a little jealous of how cool that idea was and so yeah if you do that totally um let me know it would be really cool. Okay, so we have that little section done and I'm kind of digging. <clears throat> I'm digging our helmet. Um, I'm liking the way that it works. Most of the details are gonna come in when we do the glass and the lights here and these, gonna call them air tube connectors, but I don't know what they're actually called. It's, I don't know. <laughs> but let's step away from this section for a little bit because it is still very, very wet. And let's move on down here where we're gonna want things pretty dark. So because I want it dark, I'm actually gonna take some of the purple and I'm gonna take some of the blue and I'm gonna mix those both together to get a really dark color. It's still gonna be bluey purple but it's gonna be a nice dark bluey purple and it's gonna be a combination of both colors. And we might come back in and add some more dark with the black later, but this might give us what we want without too much black. I always like to use black when I paint, except for, for highlights. Okay, so I want this section to be pretty dark, especially up in there. And then maybe right here in the middle, we'll blend, we'll blend it out a little bit and see if that's given us that kind of swoopy look we're going for. And once again, I've started on the right-hand side and I'm right-handed. So my hand is going to be touching this and it probably make a mess and oh well, we'll figure out what to do after that happens, right? So let's do the other side. Again, I want it really, really dark right in here. And maybe not so much out here. So then I rinse, I dab. Not the dab the kids do, but the other kind of dab. And then I just kind of do that. So that looks pretty cool. Um, I kind of like it. So now I have to figure out how we're going to do these little panels. <laughs> and I don't really have a plan in place. So we're going to kind of figure this out as we go. Um, I think because I did him in purple that I want this part to be blue. So I'm going to make this band here purple. Then we'll do this in blue. At, at least that's what I'm saying I'm doing right now. This could change. But let's, this might still be wet, so it's not 
go right there just yet. So we're gonna do, if you did the windmill painting, this is kind of what I did. Do it on the line, and do it on the line, and we'll just do two right now. And then rinse. I'm gonna just pull this all over here. That's a little wet, so I'm gonna dry my brush a little bit. And then here, I'm gonna pull this all over. I try to do some swoopies. Swoopies are the technical term. I feel everybody should be using that. Hoping that is my daughter's phone that just buzzed and not mine because I don't want mine to shut the video off again. Okay, so now we have a couple of the plates done. We lost a little definition there, but we can always come back and add it. It's not that big of a deal. So we're just going to keep doing this across. Uh, I got a, a paint spatter right there from my water. So since it's still wet, I'm going to grab a paper towel and dab that off real quick. It's going to be a little bit of a purple dot right there, but oh well. <laughs> I'll just need to be more careful the next time I get water out of my water glass. Okay, so this one's a little bigger. So I actually think I'm going to put a line on the other side too. Rinse. I'm going to tap it there so it doesn't get on my painting this time. And then I'm going to pull this across. And I'm going to say, time out. Please don't do this. Whatever you're doing right now, I mean, you're, I'm pausing now, so I'm going to have to edit all of this out. But if you're going to throw it away, go throw it away and then stop standing in front of that light. <laughs> yep, I'm going. going. Okay, time in. <laughs> okay, and so what I really like, this is how that um, kind of gave us a really dark, indent right there and kind of moved out. So I'm going to keep doing that. It's, it's like I, I just learned that this is really going to work and I really like it. So that's what we're going to do. But I'm going to start on this side since that's still wet, pull it over and then come back. Okay, so we rinse, we dab, and we pull. Too much water. If you can see how it's pulling, it just shows you I have a bit too much water on there. And I'm trying to keep with the form of what we're doing just to give it that little bit of an oomph. All right, now we're gonna go right along the other side here. And if it bleeds a little into the other one, it's okay. Rinse. Dry, pat, pull. Still too wet. And you'll get a feel for what's too wet for you, what's not too wet for you. You may like working with a wetter brush than I do, and that's okay. Um, it's really what works for you and your style and not just um, trying to copy somebody else's style because you'll actually get more frustrated trying to do exactly what I'm doing than you would if you just let your own self breathe through it and then then it'll work a little bit better than you think it will okay so we're doing the same thing and i can see the water pouring off of that brush <laughs> i'm pulling and then i'm gonna go back Rinse. 
And what's really cool about the watercolors is that you can do all of this different tonality and all these different shades and hues by just adding more water instead of adding a ton of colors. We're just adding more water and we're getting this effect that we're going for. So now we're dry over here. Ah, for the most part, it's not perfectly dry, but it's dry enough. I'm gonna go ahead and put that line back in. And I'm gonna pull it this way. And if you can see how this is blooming right here, it's giving it like a kind of a cool underwater effect, which is really what we're kind of going for. So it's totally fun. All right, and since so we lost a little bit of this edge here, we're just gonna add some more. And this is still pretty wet, so it might do all the work for us. It looks like it's going to, which is perfect. Okay, so we did that section. Um, this is my highly scientific method of testing to whether to see if we can move on to different places or not. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. If you can't keep your hand up out of what you just did, then wait, it's no big deal. Pause, come back, go make a snack, whatever makes you happy. Uh, you don't have to rush into sections if you don't want to. If you're not ready, if you think your hand's gonna get in it and make a mess, don't worry about it, just take a break. Now this piece is a little different because we're shadowed under here. So we want to do kind of the same thing, but have a shadow. Okay. I'm going to rinse. And I turn it sideways a lot. If you don't like to paint sideways, don't. And then I'm going to pull the color down this way and sideways. This is a little darker than below, and I like that because I like how we're getting it to look like there's a shadow from this big ball that's at the top of our diving helmet. Okay. So that's really, really, really wet because <laughs> I went a little overboard on the paint. So we're gonna go and start over here on this side. And I'm gonna do this. I'm not gonna take it all the way across because I can do that in a minute. I'm gonna pull that over and let the water just kind of blend out and maybe bloom, maybe not. Pull this down a little. Okay, this section is still way too wet for me to do what I was doing down here. So we're just gonna keep moving on and maybe we'll turn the page around and do it come the other way when it's dry. Sometimes I use too much water. Sometimes I use too much paint. The trick is don't stress, just let it go. I know, I'm no Bob Ross. I'm not gonna tell you put in a happy little tree. Um, that would look weird in this painting anyway. Uh, unless this is like a diving helmet in a tree, which, okay, that's starting to sound cool too. Uh, now that I turn it this way, I might kind of like how I'm leaving this white right here. So I'm just gonna pull that over a little bit more. Kind of leave that little itty bitty white line in between. That way I can keep it dark blend it up and it still looks, it looks cool, but it looks a little bit different from down here. And that's fun. And see, this is what happens. Like you do something and you're like, yeah, this looks better. So you just change it and that's totally fun. And kind of the exciting part about watercolor or painting in general. So just like before, drop it in. I may have to tell us that we need clean water for when we do the yellow. Um, 
you might want to have some clean water on hand here in a couple of minutes. I don't know yet. I'm deciding. Okay. All right. So I really, really like the way that turned out with these little white lines. I'm going to let it sit for a minute and see if I need to go back, maybe make them a little less noticeable. Like here, it's a little bit too thick. Here's a little too thick and just let them go for a little bit. So what we have going on next, we need to do reflection. Well, we need to do the glass. We need to do our lights and we need to do our accents. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get my glass done. So it'll be nice and dry for some of the other things. Um, I'm thinking this is a rubber gasket. So I kind of want to make it black. Um, and this one is a rubber gasket too. So we might make these black and just kind of work on highlights and shading with actual black, which is always totally fun. So what we want to do is we want to take this blue, the space blue, and you want to put it up on your palette and you want to add so much water to it. Like really, really water that down. Really, really water it down. So it is just kind of a barely there color. Okay, and we can still water it down more when it gets on the paper. So we're gonna do the center one first because it's gonna be the lightest because these are gonna be in shadow. So we'll do the center one first. And again, it still has some form. So I'm putting it down here near the bottom first. And I'm gonna rinse and I'll tell you right now that water is probably pretty blue already. So I could probably just paint this with my dirty paint water and it would have been fine. So we're gonna go around like this. Okay. So that's uh, lost a little of the dimension, so I want to come back in and I want to give it a little bit more through here. I want to rinse, tap, and just kind of let that go up through there. Okay, so we're kind of using we're using rounded strokes around the edges and we're just pulling this around leaving it a little lighter in the front now i like how that is i want to do these a little darker so i won't use as much water once i put it on so i'm going to let this be a little darker than the center one And once again, I painted the right side first, then I have to move my hand over to the left. I just like to make things really difficult for myself. So this part here is in shadow. So it's going to be a little darker, which this will dry fairly quickly. And I would just put one coat down and then come back and add a little bit more. We might let that dry a little bit more before we keep adding more. Okay. Oh no, that looks really good. <laughs> I surprise myself sometimes. And then we're going to add some more here. Okay. And so we still have the rubber gaskets. We have to do these lights. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the lights right now. Um, my paint water is very, very dirty. So we're going to take a paint break um, and I'm going to get another glass or cup with this the clear water which is just for my yellow. <clears throat> okay I'm back and I have just clear clear water. So we're going to use the lemon yellow. You have to be really careful with this stuff. It gets contaminated pretty quickly and then um, you can't 
you have to just use more. And while a little goes a long way, it really sucks to have to keep getting more and more yellow. So I have clean water. I'm gonna rinse my brush that's been touching all the purple in the clean water and tap it off to the side and I'm gonna get some of this yellow. Now the reason I did these little circles in the center is that's where the light is. So we're gonna put that down first. That yellow is not as bright as I wanted it to be. Okay, so you're gonna put that down. And then you're gonna say, wow, that yellow isn't bright enough and you're gonna get frustrated. Yep, that yellow's not bright enough. Different yellow. Um, so I've gotten Dr. PH Martin's Daffodil Yellow. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and move this all the way around. Just cover the whole thing with it. It's fine. It'll work. It's just not the bright, bright yellow I was going for. This yellow, um, I thought it was brighter than it was when I grabbed the bottle. It's not, so it's no big deal. Okay. So then we're gonna take the daffodil yellow, which is a little bit orangier and kind of neon, which is what I was going for. Sometimes you grab the bottles, they don't work. And we're gonna drop right in the center there, that bright yellow, that works. And then that's because we put the lighter yellow down first, it's actually gonna be cool. So it's gonna kind of suffuse it and give it a, um, almost like the light is emanating look. So this is actually may have worked out in our favor. So it's really, it works, it's much better. Happy accidents, right? It always, things always work out. You just gotta let it go. Okay, so now we're gonna move on <laughs> to some really loud sneezes. <laughs> This video is going to be so interesting <laughs> when I go back and listen to it and hear all the stuff in the background. Um, so I want some rust uh, on this section here and in a couple other spots. Uh, so I'm going to use this maple and I'm going to just do a couple of little spots that I want it to be rusty. You don't have to go too overboard with this. We just want a couple of rusty spots. I know that sounds strange, but just do it. If you don't want to have rust, you don't have to. So just a couple little rusty spots. And if I say rusty spot one more time, it's gonna be obnoxious, so I will stop. Okay, I'm gonna rinse. I'm done with the clean water. I only needed that for the yellow, and I'm just gonna kind of blend this out a little. We're gonna come back with some black and darken this up a little. So I'm kind of liking how the rest is moving around. So I may have changed my mind again. Like it was gray at one point in time and now, or it's like silver and nice pretty metal and it's just rusted and all you can see is the rust and I kind of digging how that looks. Um, and if you notice over there on the side, I got a little bit of the purple into it. That's adding to it, so it's kind of cool. Let it go. Let's get a little bit more of this rust and rust up right in here, maybe this edge. Rinse, tap, blend. Okay. 
Let's see, this section right here is still really, really wet. So we're being really careful. <clears throat> and since orange is a complementary color of blue, it's just kind of popping right now. So it's looking really cool. Dropping, just putting a little bit of color in certain spots, just like just dropping it around and seeing what happens. Okay, so that's nice. Um, I was gonna do those in black and I've changed my mind. If you want to do it in black, go for it. There is nothing saying you can't do this your own colors. I'm gonna go ahead and make this part's in shadow. So it's gonna be darker, especially right up in there. And then we see a little bit of it. So we want to lighten it up. There we go. We'll do the other side. So this kind of bled up into here, so it just looks like a rustier patch. So that's kind of fun. Uh, we lost an edge, but that's okay. We're gonna let that section dry before we keep messing with it. Cause if we keep messing with it, it's really gonna um, lose any kind of interest and it's just gonna be a big mess. So we're gonna move away from there. This section up here is too wet to mess with. So let's do, um, I'm calling them the rubber gaskets around the eye holes, but I think I like the way this rusty color is um, contrasting more than I like black. So I think we're just gonna do that too. So with this, we're gonna kind of still try to make it look a little rusty. So you just wanna put it in a few places. Okay, and then rinse and blend it around and just kind of have fun with the colors and like what happens with it. Let the water work for you. Don't fight the water. Let's do the other side. And then I'm going to make these like little rusty screws That's it, that I have attached. So you really don't want to take this underwater because it's got rust everywhere. Uh, I don't know about those. I don't know what to do on that. Okay, so we're still in a little bit of a everything has to dry phase. So I think I'm gonna do these and I'm actually, because I've been using so much rust and everything, we need some black. We need to brighten everything up. We need to add some darker accents. 
I think my bottle of black has finally kicked it. So I may have to get another bottle because that's what this tutorial is about, me getting up and getting other things. So we lost some of this curve here. That's okay. We're just going to put it back in. The good thing about black is it's darker than all the other colors. So you can uh, basically paint over a section if you want to. We're doing that because we want that so the inside part is going to be darker so we want to keep that lighter if that makes any sense so now we've got some detail work to do and I think I want to switch to my smaller brush because I want to make sure we don't make I want to make sure I don't make a mess so I'm going to use my smaller brush I and I'm going to add in this shadow, not on this one, because this one's still wet. Add the shadow right in here. This brush always gets like a weird little ball of water on the neck of it. I don't know why. So, I want this really dark. Okay, so that looks good. I really like the way that worked out. Um, we should be dry enough there. So what we're gonna do is, yeah, our yellow is still sopping wet. I used way too much yellow in that section. We're gonna make this section dark as well. And I could use the bigger brush, but I wanna make sure I have a lot of control And I can clean up some of these edges here. Oh, see, that looks super fun. Um, we're still a little wet right here on the inside, but we can do the outside. And that's what you do. You just, you don't want to work in places that are wet because you don't, want everything to bleed unless it's a section you want to have bleed but usually when I'm working with the black I don't want it to bleed um because it just muddies up everything that I'm working on Okay, that's dry now with my super scientific method of checking, but it wasn't down there. So, oops. All right. It's all right.
it was, so it's feathering out a little bit um, because it was still a little, uh, was still a little wet right there because I was not patient. Yeah, I do that sometimes. And so down here, I'm actually gonna use the black to add a shadow. So I'm going to put a little bit right in here and then I'm gonna rinse it. And then I'm gonna blend that shadow out. So we still have a lot of the rust color showing through, but it's darker than on top. And so we lost that line right here where it overlaps. We're gonna do the same thing right there. We're just gonna kind of follow that up like this, just to give us the idea that it's over top of it. And so that darkened out that whole section without um, losing the color. So that's what we're gonna do on this other side too. Otherwise it's like, I don't want matchy matchy, but it's a little too much where it, where it doesn't match at all, so. If you can still see your line, great. If you can't, eyeball it. Nobody cares. They'll only know if it's a mistake if you tell them. Nobody's gonna see the mistakes that you see. Okay. So I used way less black on this side than I did on the other side, so I have to add more because it's not as dark. <laughs> So that looks good. Um, we still need to do dark here. That is still not drying. So I am taking the impatient method of painting. I'm getting a paper towel that's sort of clean. And I'm putting it in the center of this to try to just sop up all that extra paint and water. And we'll come back to this section because it just, it was just sitting there soaking wet and it was driving me nuts. Okay, so we wanna get some more. We're using our little brush still. And if you did the outline from mine, there's a bunch of these little dots. So these are like rivets. We're just gonna dot those on. Nothing super perfect or crazy about them. We just want the illusion of rivets. Okay, so that kind of just looks like there's rivets at the bottom of it, which um, I really like. And I hadn't done this before, but I'm actually gonna put rivets around this just to tie it together. Um, and I like the way it ties it together with the bottom. If you don't like it, don't do it. I'm a huge fan of, if you don't like it, don't do it. Um, there is no reason your painting has to look exactly like mine. And I hope if you learn anything from these tutorials, you learn that it is totally cool to change your mind and try something different or just adjust if something isn't working the way that you thought it should. Okay, so these are, they're dry enough. So you want to straight out, curve down, straight back in. And these I wanted really dark. 
is the change in value is what gives you your dimension. So that makes those buttons or whatever in the world they are, look like they're popping out. I will say they were the hardest angle for me to get right when I was doing this and I don't even know why because all you have to do is draw two circles and put a line between them and I'm just remembering that now. So I have no idea why I made that so much harder than I had to. Once again, we have shadows over everything. Okay, so we need to finish this main piece right here. And I'm still using the smaller brush just because it gives me a little bit more control. I'm doing this inside edge first. And I'm moving my paper around so I can make sure I get it everywhere I want to and not stick my hand in it. Okay, then you want to go around those screws, your rusty screws holding your face plate on. Okay. And then I'm going to switch to the bigger brush. <coughs> And I'm just going to see what I can do here with pulling this out, whether I like it or whether I think it needs to be darker. So I'm pretty sure that's way too late and not what I was going for. And it's okay. We'll just adjust it in a second. Okay. I kind of like some of the shading over here, but I think it needs to be, I either need to come in and give, do dark or on the outside edge or do blue and make it really dark around the outside edge of this to give it that pop that I'm going for. It needs a little bit more black right in here anyway, so. Maybe just darkening that up will help. Because it just wasn't there for me. Okay, little brush, black. We got these little rubber gaskets that are holding the lights on. There's always one section of a painting that I'm not exactly sure how to paint. Uh, this appears to be that section. So we're gonna do that. All right, those lights just aren't doing it for me. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And neither is this centerpiece. So we're going to do a hard, hard line around the edge while it's still wet.
Well, it's not as wet over here on this side. That's okay. I just want this to have like a hard, hard edge. It's getting a little lost in there, but that's, that's the nature of the beast. Okay, so then I've got my bigger brush and I'm blending out this hard edge a little uh, I'm leaving it hard on the outside, but blending it towards the center. And I put my hand in blue paint, got blue paint on the side of the painting. Right there. It's okay. So what we'll do with that is when I frame it or scan it, I'll just cut that suction out. Okay. So... So this is where you take a step back and you kind of look at it and you go, hmm, what's bothering me? So these are bothering me and these are bothering me. These could be darker. Um, just the inside could be darker. I could have a little bit more dimension in here. I'm gonna see if I can do that with the bleed proof white and not worry about trying to add more paint. But I do wanna add a little bit more blue. right in here. To darken up that glass a little bit. It's off to the side, we're not seeing it as well. And some of the black pulled in and that's okay. Let's do the other side. It doesn't have to be perfectly even, but it needs to be. Like one can't be so, so bright light and the other one's super dark. It will just look goofy. Okay, let's dab. Okay. You could even do something fun like paint the reflection of a seahorse or a whale or something in that helmet that would be kind of fun all right these lights that are driving me crazy we're getting some more of the maple and i'm actually putting that in the center of this light in that circle and then i'm rinsing because <laughs> who knows how this is going to turn out and I'm going to blend that into the center like that. And then I'm just going to kind of start feathering it out this way. So it's coming into the ore or the yellow. And I think that helps tone down how bright yellow that was and how it just looked weird. Okay, rinsing again, dabbing off. And then you just Kind of smearing that out. So it ends up yellow out at the edges, but it's not quite so like, ah, I'm yellow. Um, and then I'm gonna take some of the, the daffodil yellow and touch up right around the outside there. Touch up my edge. And the daffodil yellow is a very bright color, so that should Brighten that all up. Okay. So I want this to have some streaks of lights and darks. So I'm taking some of the dark uh, space blue that I've lightened up. We're gonna see what happens. <laughs> this may be a really bad idea. And I'm just gonna do a couple dark spots in the reflection, and then I'm gonna get the bleed proof white. And I'm gonna use my clean water that I used in my yellow. That always helps when you have a clean water, I always forget. And then I'm gonna get some of this bleed proof white. And then I'm gonna put these highlights. And if you don't have bleed proof white, uh, you can use white acrylic paint. You can use white wash. 
and I'm taking it down into that dark so that the dark highlight kind of goes into the, the low light goes into the highlight. And it actually did what I wanted it to. Surprise. Um, so this is the same right up here. It's a little bleed proof white highlight into that space blue a little. I point them out. And then because I have the bleed proof white, I'm just gonna put a a little round one right there. And I think the highlight here is gonna be right there. I'm gonna work that out a little bit more. And we're gonna call it done. I might look at this later and go, what in the world was I thinking? Um, we're actually not gonna call it done. We have rivets here and rivets here, but we don't have any rivets here. So I think we need some rivets right there. I think that adds to it and gives us a little bit of sense of unity. I'm gonna dry the brush off before I grab too much of the black because we don't want the black to be really runny. You want the black to be pretty much just straight paint when you're doing something like this. Too much water and it might bloom out you might lose your line or your dot or whatever it is you're going for okay um and these need to be blue they're just telling me they do again if you don't want yours to be blue don't make them blue I'm just adding blue over the lighter section. To kind of help tie it all together. I didn't like how it was sticking out so much. And I've decided that my glass is just still too, too light. So I'm gonna add a little bit more dark in there. But I'm only going to do it down here. And then I'm going to take it up. I know I said I was only going to do it down there, but I decided I wanted to do it up here too. And blend it down to the highlight. I think that helps it. Again, it's just kind of what you want to do. If yours isn't working, uh, you might have to play with some things a little bit. Like, I'm not liking my yellow lights on the top of the helmet at all. I don't know how I completely screwed these up, but it is what it is. It probably looks better on camera. Uh, there's a tendency when you're just looking at it and looking at it and looking at it. It starts to just... Uh, starts to annoy you and you really, really, really should take a step back uh, as I just put green in there. So we're going to embrace that green. Um, maybe that helps because <laughs> I just put green into the glass. So now we just kind of have to, the gra glass is now green. Oops. Um, actually, <laughs> that mistake I really like. I like the green in the glass. I think it looks good. I need to stop messing with it because I just moved some black around. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to stop. I hope you guys all had fun. Um, wine and water colors with Wendy. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're not. I 
this one was fun. I, I would like to see what everybody else does with it, if anybody does it. Uh, if anybody follows any of these tutorials, I don't know if anybody listens to me. I've decided that needs to be darker. Sorry, I know I keep saying I'm done and then I keep coming back in. This is uh, actually a bad sign. You really should walk away. I, I am doing exactly what I tell people to stop doing. Um, so do as I say, not as I do. All right, and then I'm gonna pull this up and then I'm gonna be done, I swear. Where? Is that Backstreet Boys? I can't remember who sang that song. Okay, needs more water. I'm really going crazy and rogue here and doing all sorts of stuff I shouldn't be doing. I guess I just felt like there wasn't enough purple. And that happens, but I really, this is, this is not what I would recommend you do. <laughs> when you're getting frustrated, you really should just stop. Um, which is what I'm doing now. It's done. Um, we are all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this Wine Watercolors with Wendy. I will try to keep posting them and hopefully this one taped. Thank you. Bye-bye.